Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. In this video I'm gonna revisit uh, this uh, little device, the WIC64 or the WIC64 and uh, yeah, I always uh, like to see new solutions for the Commodore machines or <laughs> any old machine for that matter. It's interesting to mix uh, new technology with the old tech and uh, see that there actually is some innovation uh, that can still be done for the old machines. So I made a video about the Vic 64 last year and if you want to have an introduction on what the WIC64 is then you can check out uh, this video there and uh, I go through what it is and uh, how to use it and uh, test it out. I'm not gonna go into detail in this video what uh, this is but uh, just uh, shortly it is a module for the Commodore 64 that lets you load programs and uh, communicate over the internet with the Commodore 64. Instead in this video I'm gonna go through what's new with the WIC 64 and uh, what has happened since my last video and what you can do with it now. But first we need to set up this Commodore 64 to use this and uh, to be able to do that you need to replace uh, the kernel ROM with a special WIC64 kernel uh, ROM. And since there has been some development going on we need to replace this kernel ROM with a new version. I mean if there is a new version of the kernel I'm not really sure about that but um, let's check. I just visit uh, wic64.de and go to programs and documents. Let's see down here. Here's all the necessary uh, software and documentation and uh, the WIC64 kernel, it seems the last version is uh, from November 2021. So uh, yeah, then it is uh, the current version that I already got and uh, there's uh, no need for um, updating uh, that kernel ROM. That's good. However, if you wanted to create a kernel ROM yourself, you just download this WIC64 C64 kernel and uh, there you have the WIC64 kernel binary, 8 kilobyte, and then you just burn that onto an EEPROM. Still I want to update the, the firmware on this. Um, this is uh, in fact an ESP32 development board with a Wi-Fi module and uh, yeah, little OLED screen and everything you need. And uh, it was kind of a hassle to uh, install the firmware and the software on this. Uh, you had to download the correct uh, tools to program it and uh, yeah, find the correct uh, serial drivers and things like that. I think that's uh, been improved a lot now so we're gonna check out that. This is not only for the C64 you can use it with a WIC20 and the Commodore 128. So let's insert the ROM first of all. To insert a modified ROM you obviously need a, a machine that has uh, the kernel ROM already in a socket or else you need to desolder um, the kernel ROM chip which might not be that uh, easy for everyone but uh, on this one I already got Jiffy DOS so uh, it already has a modified kernel ROM. So that revealed uh, the motherboard and uh, that's the, the Jiffy DOS kernel ROM. So I'm just gonna pull that out and replace it with the other one. 
Now this uh, modified kernel is only necessary if you want to load programs directly from the internet using um, the load command. Uh, if you just can use the other software available for uh, the VIC-64 you don't need it. However this particular kernel was made for um, a regular Commodore 64 and it won't work with this Commodore 64C because it has a 27C128 kernel ROM even if it's the same uh, number of pins so we need to make a new one after all. By the way on a regular uh, breadbox Commodore 64 to use a modified kernel you need an adapter because uh, the oldest Commodore 64s they don't have the same pinouts on uh, the 2364 uh, chips that they use. Here's the 27C128 EEPROM chip and I'm just going to burn uh, the modified kernel ROM onto that. Yes, and that succeeded. Verified OK. OK, so uh, that burnt uh, ROM did not work and um, yeah, well, <laughs> I actually forgot, but the Commodore 64C, it doesn't have a regular kernel ROM. It has a combination of a kernel and basic ROM into one chip. And uh, that's why this is a 16 kilobyte chip. You have the kernel ROM and the basic ROM into one. So we need to figure out how to fix that. <laughs> now here I actually took uh, an original kernel and basic uh, ROM from the Commodore 64C and I have read uh, that uh, chip out and we can see it says here CBM basic. So that means that the, the basic uh, ROM starts at uh, the first address at address zero and then 8K later uh, that means at address 2000 hex we should find the actual kernel room and uh, yeah here we have at address 2000 it starts with a dot v and if we scroll a little bit down we find the familiar basic bytes free and the commodore 64 basic v2 message. So we need a way to modify this kernel ROM the same way as the one that I downloaded for the VIC-64. So here I have uh, the kernel that I downloaded and uh, the VIC-64 kernel.bin and the original kernel ROM and uh, this is uh, the C64C combined kernel ROM and basic ROM and uh, yeah, I didn't find a modified C64C ROM with the WIC64 routines in it. It's not on their download page and I have searched also on Google a little bit, couldn't find it. So we need to make one ourselves. And um, luckily the assembler code that modifies the kernel ROM comes with the downloaded kernel ROM. So, um, and this needs to be compiled in the C64 Studio. And here's the C64 studio and uh, I loaded in the ASM file. And here I tried to figure out what this code actually does. And it turns out that it uh, takes um, the WIC64 kernel bin file as an um, output to, and it has some uh, start address at E00. And then input is the original kernel ROM bin file and then it just uh, have the machine code for modifying in the ROM code. So we need to change this and instead of reading from uh, the C64 kernel we're gonna read from the C64C ROM and uh, write to another WIC64 kernel for the C64C instead. And also we see here that uh, it loads it into memory address E000, but uh, now that we have a 16K ROM and we know that it starts with the basic uh, part of that first, we just need to change this to um, 2K lower, like that, and then change the file names. And now we're gonna write to a C64C kernel binary. So we actually just offset everything by eight kilobytes and uh, the code will be inserted um, at the correct uh, position. 
So if we compile this now, you see it comes with a lot of warnings, but it says build successful. And we now should have uh, the C64C kernel for the VIC64. Yeah, and I see that the timestamp is correct and it's a 16 kilobyte uh, file. Hopefully this will work. Uh, now I'm gonna load in our modified uh, C64 kernel for the VIC64 that we just made. And if we now search for, uh, we can see it starts with the same bytes for the CBM basic and uh, everything. If we search for uh, basic, there we got it. It's uh, basic bytes free and now it says Commodore VIC 64 basic V3. That's uh, one of the modifications. And we see that in fact, yeah, where the modification starts is at the address 2460 while it on the original kernel ROM was at uh, 0460 so this is uh, exactly 8 kilobytes um, further down and uh, we should now be able to program uh, this. So I inserted another 27128 EEPROM and just gonna program it. The EEPROM programmed successfully let's test now see if it works. Okay, yeah, look at that. It says Commodore WIC 64, but something happened with the graphics here. Not really sure if it's something. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> Don't know what that was, but uh, yeah, the modified ROM is uh, loaded and working. Nice. <laughs> and we see that it says Commodore WIC 64. Anyway, this uh, ROM modification, as I told you, is not necessary to, um, to use the WIC64. And in fact, in the code for the modification, it says that it's just experimental and that's some crappy code and uh, some other uh, kernel ROM routines might not work after applying this patch. But still, I'm gonna test it out and see if it still works. All right, I inserted the VIC64 and uh, turned on the machine. And in fact, it did remember the VLAN I had configured from before. So I didn't have to do anything. It just uh, started up and uh, looks to be uh, connected to the internet. Now, one of the things uh, that you can do with the modified uh, kernel ROM, as I mentioned, is that you can uh, load programs from HTTP. Let's say you have something uh, on some uh, x64.site. Just gonna test it now, not with a real uh, program to load. And it will load that from uh, that URL. Yeah, and it tried to load, but didn't find anything. So I'm gonna come back to that later. Another thing uh, that you get with the modified kernel is that you can press F1 on the keyboard and it will start loading something from the VIC64DE site. And as you saw, it went fairly quick. And that is in fact the loader for the portal. So yeah, and uh, one of the things I wanted to do was uh, to um, load a new firmware. And here we got a firmware update. So you can select uh, either normal firmware or developer firmware. I'm not gonna do any development, uh, not in this video at least. Maybe I'll look into that sometime later. So let's uh, download uh, the normal firmware update. It says wait 30 seconds for a reboot, then press zero to restart. All right, so it just flashed its LED and uh, now it is restarted again. Another thing I think is new since I installed uh, the VIC64 is uh, this online flash tool. And here you can uh, install the firmware directly to the device uh, through the browser. It says here this tool works only with Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge and you need to first install uh, the serial drivers uh, here. 
and uh, I have already installed those so uh, let's check it out and uh, I have now connected uh, the VIX64 to the computer with a USB cable and uh, hopefully it will detect it and uh, install it let's try connect yeah, it phones CP2102 USB to UART bridge controller at COM5, so select that and connect. So I'll install the VIC64 default firmware. All existing data will be erased. Okay. <laughs> We might have to configure the VLAN after this, uh, we'll see. Obviously this is something you do first time after getting the, this device and if it isn't already flashed with the current firmware. All right, installation complete, nice. Okay, let's see now if it still uh, boots and that it uh, kept its settings however it did not retain uh, the vlan settings so i need to uh, set up that once more to configure the vlan you need to download the, the correct program from uh, the big 64 web page and uh, load it onto commodore 64 and uh, either we are <laughs> a real floppy or we are some uh, other means i here have uh, the Kung Fu flash cartridge and I'm selecting uh, the VLAN scan config. Uh, you can also use the VLAN config. Yeah, and here it found uh, a couple of Wi-Fi networks and uh, the number one and two is uh, mine. So I just select number one and then I type my password and it shows the password <laughs> in clear text. So I'm gonna stop recording now. Yeah, and that just uh, completed and exited by itself. And now I got back my uh, VLAN configuration and I got an IP address and, and I'm back to being able to use uh, the VIC64 again. So now we're pretty sure that we have the latest and greatest firmware here. So before we check out the new features of uh, the portal, I was thinking maybe I should try and load something from uh, the internet directly and uh, yeah. If I remember correctly, you had to use a lower case or <laughs> yeah, it is kind of case sensitive if you try to load files from uh, like a web hotel or anything like that. And uh, yeah, it's, let's use the load command then. And um, I have my own domain for um, Arctic Retro. And I have a folder there called files and into that uh, uh, directory I put a rambo2.prg. Let's see if we can load that. That should be really quick but as you can see it is now just hanging there and I have actually reset my uh, VLAN router and still uh, from time to time it just simply hangs and can't load anything. You have to reset and try again and then it might work. So that's a little bit unfortunate. I'm not really sure what's the reason if uh, the firmware isn't that good or uh, yeah there's a lot of bugs in it or it's not just uh, from uh, basic here uh, that it hangs it's also from within the wix64 portal and also their other tools okay now it worked and uh, i didn't have to use lowercase letters so uh, that seems to actually be an improvement uh, one issue is that you uh, if you want to load over HTTPS, that means that the connection is encrypted, then I'm pretty sure uh, it won't work. Let's try that. Because then you would need a SSL <laughs> encryption <laughs> library or something in the, the machine, which uh, obviously you can't have in the Commodore 64. Anyway, when it does load successfully, like 
that it is actually very quick and uh, loaded Rambo 2 in uh, yeah <laughs> just two seconds or so okay it uh, has a syntax error <laughs> yeah I just um, <laughs> loaded it successfully right before this and without recording and then it worked but uh, no this time it didn't work <laughs> So it might be something with the machine. I mean, <laughs> you never know, but uh, this machine has worked just fine on everything else. All right, there it worked. <laughs> Maybe you need the lowercase letters or the correct casing to load. Rambo 2 Anyway, this wasn't about loading games from the internet into basic um, But I really wish uh, that the makers of this uh, WIC 64 would uh, do a better job with uh, yeah, making a kernel ROM that actually works reliable and uh, yeah, can be used and uh, do a little bit more. I mean, it's kind of limited, but um, that's how it is and maybe something with the stability um, could be this machine could be the device i have but uh, as you can see now again it just hangs so yeah all right we're back in the portal let's see now what uh, has changed here and uh, yeah first thing i'm gonna check is this internet because there's a new thing here called Google Maps and you <laughs> probably all have uh, <laughs> heard about Google Maps and uh, it's now possible to display a Google Map <laughs> on a Commodore 64 and uh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, look at that and it actually detected uh, <laughs> my position here. It's uh, Bode <laughs> and uh, this is the main road into Buda and yeah, let's see, I live around uh, here, yeah. And you can move around and zoom in and out. Obviously it's a little bit hard to see what's on the map, but uh, let's see if we can zoom in. No, that was a zoom out. <laughs> Yeah, Google Maps on the Commodore 64. Yeah, now you can see the actual buildings and uh, the streets. And you can actually search for another place if you want. Let's uh, try uh, Paris. Okay, that's Paris. <laughs> Let's zoom a little bit out then. Yes. And in fact, if you press V, you enter Street View. <laughs> so now I can uh, navigate the streets of Paris <laughs> on a Commodore 64. Isn't that cool? Let's see if we can find the Eiffel Tower. Yes, look at that. We can walk around the Eiffel Tower <laughs> in Google Street View on a Commodore 64. That's amazing. And if you enter road map mode, uh, you get a little bit uh, better map type that shows the streets a little bit better so that was google maps then you have something called csdb browser and csdb is uh, that big archive on the internet for um, all different kinds of uh, commodore 64 
software releases, demos and games. So uh, let's see now if we can browse the current news. Yeah, uh, latest releases, Donkey Kong Country. Q to enter query, let's search for Rambo. Yeah, that just shows you some information about the files that they have there. Then you have an RSS reader. I think that was there from before. Not much to say about that. Maybe a little bit more interesting area is this online games. I haven't tried it, but there seems to be some multiplayer uh, options here and some other games you have uh, yeah let's try pole position seems like it saves uh, high scores <laughs> yeah high score saver okay it loaded the uh, pole position right away from the internet that's kind of cool And then we can see the high scores for pole position. Okay, so last year, um, Dragon, 122,180 points. And we have Guiana Sisters as well. We can play it directly from the internet. Ah. Piano sisters, it's been a long time. Yeah, and as you can see, there's a bunch of games here, but uh, not a lot. You also have uh, this high score games too. And yeah, there actually is a Rambo 2. <laughs> bubble bubble. And here's something new also, it's called a pixel project. And it's some kind of a cooperation where you fill a canvas together with the community. You place one pixel, okay. So uh, I'm not really sure how this works. I need to study it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> That's some community drawing. Multorial. Okay, so um, seems you can cooperate with uh, syncing clients looking for nails. <laughs> I need to find someone to play this with if I'm gonna test it. All right, so uh, now the portal seems to work very good. I haven't had any issues the last uh, 15 minutes. And the reason I think is maybe because I took out that uh, kernel ROM I made and uh, replaced it with the original Commodore 64C uh, ROM. And uh, now everything seems to work much better. Um, yeah, so it might be just that. Okay, so we have this uh, apps area here and uh, yeah, there's nothing new there. There's uh, Wic64 radio, which was uh, there before and that's the SID radio player, uh, which has a lot of uh, SID tunes we can uh, select and uh, play. 
demos. Yeah, the koala show is that. Uh, yeah, it loads pictures from uh, the internet. Bitmaps made in koala painter, I guess. <laughs> And of course there's some demos as well. All right, that was it for this video. Um, great uh, little revisit uh, of the WIC 64. And uh, as I mentioned, it can be used on the WIC 20 and the C128 at, as well. Uh, still a little bit unstable, might be because of my setup here. I'm not really sure. And uh, it hasn't changed that much. I had really hoped to see some more improvements in both the firmware and and uh, yeah, the tools and everything, a few new services and the games and uh, yeah. But this could really be a good um, thing if uh, someone uh, embraced this technology and uh, made some new services and stuff for uh, the C64 and the WIC 64. So hopefully we'll see more in the future. All right, uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.